Bioregion of Nocellas Basin, Valley of Sagana, Northwestern Sicily, Italy. As environmental humanists, working with words and moving images, we lived with the family of permaculture designers Simona Trecarichi and Danilo Colomero. Through our ethnographic fieldworks, we experienced, embodied and documented their and our engagement with land. Water, wind, bacteria, plants, insects, birds, frogs, people, donkeys, multi-species collectives interconnected with the elements. The land was crafted by and shared among modern human biotic and elemental communities. Land is a relational poiesis made of all the worldly agencies and expressiveness. To the definition of permaculture as, quote, consciously designed landscapes which mimic patterns and relationships found in nature, end of quote, we propose the ecocritical interpretation of a manner of reading the land. Following its first principle, observe and interact, in our view, Permaculture is a dynamic practice of more than human communication, which regards entering in a semiotic relationship with one's bioregion. A constant, ever-changing interpretation and response to the world's narrative signs. The Tardoling permacultural site is located in a mountainous territory, which has seen multiple anthropogenic changes since human prehistory. Its coming to existence was possible because of the previous human inhabitants' exploitative agency on the land. In fact, its rocky peaks were knocked down with dynamite to produce a flat space where to build two houses. As Hannah Singh points out, it is time to admit that, quote, degraded, blasted landscapes produce our livelihoods, end of quote. Over 15 years, Simona and Danilo have been learning to weave nurturing relationships with land. Since the beginning of the project, they had to face the problem of keeping the grass low for they live in a fire-prone region. Through the encounter with permaculture, they discovered that they could address this need, for example, by introducing herbivore animals in the site. The expressiveness of the land as a series of signs to be observed for prolonged periods. Rocky desert-like soil, the predominance of Diza, Ampeledesmos Mauritanicus, the availability of grazing areas, were addressed with the introduction of two donkeys, Tondolo and Georgiana. The donkey's life through the land is part of a collaborative shaping that is a process of regeneration. By eating the grass and giving it back to the soil transformed and enriched with enzymes and bacteria, they act as catalysts for the vitality and activity of the soil. However, the multispecies relationship between Simona and Danilo and Dondolo and Georgiana is not to be reduced to merely utilitarian purposes. It is a coexisting in which both species need to adjust to a shared story that continually unfolds and evolves. Over the years, as the donkey's manure became litter on the ground, mushrooms started to appear together with new plant species like St. John's wort. A multi-species and elemental tale of shaping 
the blasted landscape, a new plot woven with regeneration as its protagonist. Straw combined with dried parts of distilled plants as fiber, clay soil, donkey's manure, a third in volume for each part. These need to be mixed with smaller quantities of ash, charcoal or any other porous material, forest litter and yeasts, the microorganisms that will start the fermentation process. Of course, Water is the fundamental activator. This is the general recipe for a hot bokashi compost, which humans need to tend during the beginning of its decomposing life in order to keep the temperature constant. In fact, on the first days it can reach up and beyond 60 degrees. Not enough water might not start the process, too much water might block it. Another multi-species tail to be woven with the elements. Living in an arid, mountainous area. Living with a rocky desert-like land, with not enough organic matter, generated the need to increase its presence in the soil. Together with the donkeys and the piles of compost, Simona and Danilo are managing to have fertile humus to nurture the nursery of plants that will be transplanted in the various zones of their permacultural design. Missione SOS, as they call it. The mission of organic substance in the soil. A mission that involves not only caring for that which is already present, but above all, contributing to the possibilities of its increase. Moreover, as Simona told us, one of the main benefits of having more organic matter in the soil is its capacity for water retention. The soil becomes like a sponge, able to absorb the yearly rains and store them in its sacs of root nutrition. Drawing on Maria Puch de la Bella Casa, composting is an act of caring for soil communities. Such caring involves, quote, the acknowledgement that the human carer also depends on soil's capacity to take care of a number of processes that are vital to more than her existence, end of quote. Engaging with composting is an opportunity to closely relate with more than human temporality and spatiality. An opportunity to understand life and death at ground level. To discover that the composition is another composition and that we humans are also made out of compost. As Dana Haraway writes, quote, We are all compost, not post-human, end quote. During the first days of the Bokashi life, we had to adjust our behavior according to the temperature it reached, to the weather, to our body strength as we turned the heavy pile. The compost illuminated yet another story of relation, that with water. Water as the activator of life, water and its bioregional cycle. As Danilo told us, the land of Tardoling gratefully receives rain, but it is also very arid. This is why the water capturing recycling project was born. The most recent result is the earthwork of a pond for the phytodepuration system. This was shaped 
from the debris of the house's renovation, otherwise waste material. Domestic grey water is redirected to an old Jebia, Sicilian for cistern, which was planted with the reeds Fragmites australis that act as aerobic filters. Purified, the water then fills the irrigating tank, whereas its surplus flows into the small lake. The tank water is then given to the nursery's plants that one day will be transplanted in the food forest, where Dondola and Georgiana are already grazing, leaving their precious excrements behind. Some are decomposed in situ on the ground. Some are accumulated into compost piles near the pond, such as the Bokashi. The pond is an earthwork of the land Sympoiesis. The compound earthwork commonly means a change in the morphology of the landscape, usually of anthropogenic origin with negative ecosystemic effects. However, within a permacultural design it can be overturned to signify a work of land that goes with the multiple rhythms of the earth and not against them. Like the non-human caring of the donkeys, of the compass pile and its inhabitants, the reeds are taking care of the grey water the humans tend to consider waste. The latter is instead a feeding nutrient for the microorganisms that live in the reeds' roots and on their leafy litter. Over the course of three years, the small lake has become a relevant multi-species an elemental meeting point. Its revitalized water is inhabited by back swimmers and tree frogs among many. According to the season, it is visited by the apiary's honeybees that seek particular nutrients for their gastrointestinal tract. Dragonflies are attracted thus regulating the number of insects that could infest the olive trees or the food forest. Humans taking care of the grey water are accepting to share the responsibility of its transformation rather than discharging it underground where it might cause problems elsewhere. With the design effort, Simona and Danilo's polluted water not only does not become a problem, it is converted into a resource for other beings too. Last year, the frogs started chanting in late March. At Tardoling, there is a shady, cooler place where the wind plays through the vegetal orchestra the multi-layered story of modern human spatiality and temporality. The food forest original core. Its project is just at the beginning, expanding from a nucleus area where tall pines were already growing. A food forest is composed by companionship planting that forms several layers as thus a spontaneous forest. The aim is to design and favor an autonomous ecosystem in a way where human intervention will not be needed after the first years of nursing care. As Toby Hemingway explains, quote, each plant is chosen for the roles that it will play, whether for food, wildlife habitat, herbal medicine, insect attraction, soil building. 
end quote. As Simona told us, quote, it is generally designed according to seven or eight layers. The big trees, the medium trees, the shrubs, the herbaceous plants, the covering plants, the crops to give roots, and the vines. There are those who add an eight layer, that of fungi. Besides, in the design of permaculture, the food forest is usually situated in zone four, not that close to the house. The beautiful thing is that it is a forest, thus a stable system, a zone where there is a lot of energy input in the initial projecting and planting, but once it gets started, it goes by itself. We are at the level of the tall trees, them requiring more time to grow, and there are also those that occupy more space, that is why they need to be localized so that they are not too close to one another. And we are thinking over the trees to put. Some we already decided and planted, like the chestnuts and hazelnuts. And we also put some covering plants, like the wild strawberries, which are doing well. Having planted within the pine grove allowed them to survive as they are in a familiar microclimate and allowed us to have less irrigations in summer because naturally the area has a higher level of humidity." End of quote. The food forest is an imaginative exercise of reading the land which involves practices of hope. The same hope that regards interacting with Dondola and Georgiana, with the compost makers, with the water cycle. Hope as an appreciation that, as Tom Van Doren reminds us, quote, the world is not ours to sort out, to order unilaterally to a particular vision of how it should be, end quote. As Simona and Danilo read the signs of the land that they shared, they interpreted them and replied to them in the form of a design that requires imagining with more than human spatial and temporal qualities. Enacting such imagination by adding new layers of plants to the food forest system means engaging with hope. In Van Doren's words, quote, hope is an ongoing effort to cultivate the conditions for a better future. Hope as work of care for the future. Much more than an anticipation of or a simple desire for coming good, hope is an effort to care for that possibility in committed, practical and situated ways. End quote. The possibility of coming good is not a positive opposition to doom and gloom or apocalyptic narratives. It is in coexistence with them. To be sure, we are living an epoch of collapse. We are living through the collapses that derive from the Anthropocene. To live through, following Tim Ingold, means that we are not occupants of a collapsing world, but we are inhabitants in the world's collective collapsing performance. The current epoch is a timely opportunity to reconsider human life on Earth through narrations that communicate interconnectedness. As we acknowledge that our planet is damaged, we are simultaneously recognizing that regenerating the world signifies the regeneration of human cultures.
being aware of the stories of relationship behind and around the Earth's degradation is a mental preparation for the challenges of the Anthropocenic times. In agreement with Van Doren, we think about narrating not merely as an account of existing relationships, but also as a manner to relate differently to the other earthly inhabitants. As he affirms, storytelling is, quote, a dynamic act of storing the world, utterly inseparable from lived experience, end quote. Wild carrot is wild carrot. Wild carrot is a plant. Wild carrot is an opportunity to access the interweaving of life and death. Wild carrot is an opportunity to be wild carrot, to be with wild carrot. How do wild carrots live? What do they do when it's windy? How do they interact with the sun? Do wild carrots exist for essential oil making? Of course, it is not just that. I soon realized the big anthropocentric illusion. How is the oil extracted from a plant? Is there purity in nature? Yes, when I'm not held accountable. We spent many a morning gathering the turgid umbrella flowers as we made our way through the slender tall stems, caressed by their hairy foliage. For as little as 250 mil, boxes and boxes of flowers are needed. Make sure that the plant is thriving. Move, walk, move to gather from different points before gathering, open the flowers, one by one. What do I find? Many insects, most visibly shield bugs, nesting with their families, protected from the summer heat, from predators at peace. Gather, 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 and leave enough for the plant's reproduction. Gather, 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 and do not kill a whole new generation of Italian striped bug. If I want, I can be careful if I'm mindful. And yet, there will be hundreds of critters that will perish because invisible to my eyes, because too slow to get out of the distiller. No guilt, we did our best. We sealed the lid and activated the distillation in cooperation with water. No illusions, just magic. The magic of life giving life when I'm ready to acknowledge it. We had returned from the harvest regenerated by the sweet carrot scented immersion. We had had a pleasant chat while preparing the flowers to be distilled. We had been fair and balanced. We were going to return the dead vegetal and animal beings to the soil. Life and death in essential oil. <laughs>